Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Did You Know Where You Literally Know What You Need To Know. Alhamdulillah, joining me today is none other than Dr. Khalid Abu Bakr, and we will be discussing a very important topic. But before we get to know what we're going to be talking about, stay tuned and we will be right back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing, Habib? I'm okay, and you? Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. When I shaked your hand, I remember the first time I saw you in the masjid when I came to Faiba, and I sat down on the front. And let me tell you the truth today. Mm. You know why I sat in the front? Why I always come to sit in the front? Because I wanted to just be like you. So anytime I come, my mom at times don't even say I should come and greet you. I just come and meet you and say, Sheikh, Sheikh, Sheikh. My mom says I should say hi because <laughs> I wanted to be like you, Subhanallah. Allah. Good to have you on the show, Sheikh. Thank you really very much, and I'm very pleased to be with you here today on this program. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Mm. So our topic for discussion today, you know, uh, is going to be on uh, hope in times of difficulty. A lot of people are going through difficulty, either from loss of loved ones, either from loss of job. Some people are depressed. Some people are going through so much that they can't even talk about. I know of people that they, they don't even know who to call at times to talk about their problems. In this situation, as Muslims, what are we expected to do? You know, do we lose faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are the steps that we as Muslims need to take? But before we go into that, Mm. Does Islam recognize the fact that human beings go through a lot of problems? Well, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu alayhi wa nabi kareem I give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one and the only one, the creator, the nourisher, and the sustainer of the world. I testify that he is the one who deserves to worship and testify that our master, our model, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the most distinguished of all Allah's creatures sent at the end of time with the final message. Of course, Islam, as it is said, Islam is a religion and a way of life. It's not just, just a religion, worship, worship, worship. It's a way of life in its entirety. You are walking, you are smiling, you are eating, you are drinking, you are interacting, and so on. All these things are part of Islam. Therefore, being a natural, Allah's innate, pure religion, approved by Allah, as perfected by Allah, and sent with, with it uh, to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, Islam recognizes that life is full of uh, hiccups, ups and downs, and that... Um, Life is not only, it's not full of roses. Of course, there are challenges, there are problems, and um, there are trials which we will come into contact with. In the glorious Quran, various verses, and, uh, and in the hadith of Rasulullah, a lot and a lot of hadith. Take a look at uh, Surah Al. Uh, Ankabut, the spider, in which Allah, the Most High, says, Alas, do you think because you profess the faith that you will not be tested? We did, in, we did indeed test those who came before you. To an extent, if you go back to chapter 2, Surah Al Baqarah, Allah wa ta'ala is drawing our attention hey, you Muslims, come to terms, understand that you think, what are we aspiring as the, this, as the prime goal we aspire in the year after is the Jannah. Then Allah draws our attention. Hey, understand, listen, do you think that you will be committed or admitted into the garden of eternity just like that without you being challenged, where, without you being put to serious trials, pains, Pangs, troubles, sickness, poverty, insecurity, kidnapping, bloodshed, and you think you'll not be tested? You'll not be tested? No, 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 no. No, you'll be tested. 
And this is what is called the Sunnah of Allah, path of Allah, which is natural that everybody must come to pass through. That is it. And without test, there can be no movement and there can be no success and there can be no really measurement through which you can understand the, 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 the success or the failure. So indeed, this is it. It is natural. Islam has uh, really shown us that this is natural. Therefore, Islam accepts and there are various places like that. Indeed, again, when you look at uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, and it is indeed very spiritually stimulating, where Allah says, indeed, we will test you uh, of something of hunger, fear, loss of lives and property, but give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere, those whom when inflicted with these trials, they say we are from we are from from Allah we come and to him is our own uh, return inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Then there Allah says, said for such a special grant of Allah's favor of forgiveness hmm. and mercy and such are the guided ones. That is why elsewhere, those who patiently persevere during trying times on the day of standing, they will not pass through the rigorous hisab because they, they will have found their rewards perfected and completed in some aphorisms, reports from the preceding uh, uh, righteous. It was said that on the day of standing, Allah will order an angel to say, let those whose rewards are with Allah stand up. Hmm. On the day of standing, when everybody will be there, then there will be this announcement. <clears throat> let those whose rewards rest with Allah come forward. Then people will be seen standing and standing and they will be say, and they will be shining, and they will be accompanied, and they will climb a pulpit of honor, and they'll be said, hey, who are these people? It will be said that these are those who patiently persevere when any trial or test comes to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, they will have their rewards perfected, completed without hisab, and Allah will give them the Jannah. May Allah give us. I mean, I mean, Sheikh, you know, you talked about how it is okay to have problems, you know, for all. As Muslim, it is basically uh, a tradition that the problem will come. You brought the ayah where Allah said, not because, because you say you believe, you wouldn't be tested. Now, let's take a trip back to the life of the best man of Kandab, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Were there times that he was tested and how did he react? Thank you. I think this is the most important thing. That since it is natural, it is natural, it is natural. Even if you look at the, 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 the non-religious life situation, in terms of... Um, so John, in trying to make one's ends meet, traveling, investing, to, today profit, tomorrow is a loss, tomorrow is uh, you are appointed, tomorrow you are sacked, tomorrow this and that. This is very, very natural. But the most important thing is the reaction of the individual Muslim. What are you supposed to do? Well, today we have, oh, why me? Me, oh God, why me? Why? My friend has made it. Ask him. He has passed through so many tests. Maybe more devastating than yours. But because he has or he had the spiritual tranquility and calmness because he was taught to patiently persevere but not to be depressed 
and be drawn back and be prayerful and get up and continue to push. Maybe because he didn't see that, you think he has not passed through that. Well, um, according to the wise sayings of the Prophet Hadith, al Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he taught us one very important uh, mental and physical comportment. Comportment means composure. That he taught us in the Masabru in the Sadmatil Ula. Patience is supposed to strike. Uh, uh, patience is supposed to be there quickly as the strike of the trial comes. You control yourself. In chapter 2 that we give example where those who say Inna lillahi wa inna li rajun, to, from Allah we come unto him we are going back. Now is that as it happens you remember Allah. As it happens there are steps you are supposed to take. There, it can be painful, it can be sad, it can be traumatizing, it can be, can be, can be, can be, but in the end, what is required of you is not to lose sight and continue to express or utter very dangerous statements that are inimical to one's faith. That may perhaps um, maybe uh, cause one to lose his own faith. Because, by the way, you can't question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There, um, there are some aphorisms. Aphorisms are reports from the righteous president uh, uh, scholars that it was said that. Allah the Almighty says, O Moses, Musa, whoever accepts not my decision of his own destiny and did not patiently persevere over what I tested him with, okay, since he doesn't want to let him go out from my dunya, from the heavens and the earth, since he has where to go, okay, let him go out of this world. Is there any other world than this world? No, no, no. And how can he go? Where? 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 Okay, let him go out. Let him penetrate to the earth and go to another world. And let him go and complain or petition me to another God, if there's any other God. No, no. That I have done this, this, and that. Meaning that you cannot. Allah decides and nobody can petition what he decides. That is why uh, during the, uh, the climate change, well, elsewhere is, is, is a winter. Elsewhere in Abuja is not winter. But go to other places. Go to Jos, go to Kaduna. It's indeed really very cold. And so on. Do you challenge that? The natural law of Allah Ta'ala which brings about change. How do you do with it? All you are supposed to do is to con come to terms with this, accept and do the necessary adjustment. As a wife, between the husband and wife relationship, the home itself is a very important institution. And that uh, in the home, between the spouses. Well, you know, it is important to have uh, the same kind of, uh, uh, the same focus to the world. But you find that there may be differences and so on, what you do. As uh, between parents and children, yes, we are graduates. Yes, I'm a professional. Yes, I'm a specialist. Yes, uh, well, um, when the jet age, the computer age, our parents were, uh, um, were not like, we are digital and they are not digital and so on and so forth. So you begin to see it different. What you are supposed to do is to remember a father is a father. A father is a father. 
and he has certain um, levels of respect and surrender that you are supposed to do. You know, that's why it is in Islam, you know, elsewhere in Europe, in America, you see, so, you say, daddy, oh, oh, dad, don't be stupid. Oh, daddy, oh, you, you are silly. You know, in Islam, mm -hmm. don't even utter a word like oof or if. So if, if or oof doesn't have any meaning. It's only maybe when your key uh, 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 fell in a dust and you want to just, just erase the door, you say, oof, oof, finish. But, but if two letters are not supposed to be expressed towards parents, then how about abusing them? How about and so on and so forth? Therefore, in the home, also there may be challenges. In the working place, in the office, there are also maybe challenges. In the university, there may be challenges. Everything is about challenge. Even the religion itself is a challenge between Iman and Kufr. And that you must partake the path of Iman and, uh, uh, and forsake the path of Kufr and satanic uh, paths and so on and so forth. Therefore, it is important. What is important is our reaction. One, self-composure. Two, instantaneous patience and perseverance. Three, guarding our utterances. Four, accepting the decision of destiny from Allah wa ta'ala, which does not mean for you to fall down and sleep and become depressed. Rather, re-strategize and push forward and continue. Maybe the opening is uh, there. Five, continue to be yourself. Six, continue to do dhikr. Seventh, continue to read the Quran. Eight, give charity, sadaqa, Bismillah. Nine, have listening ears to the parents or the elders. Ten, and continue to support others. Mm. Amazing, Sheikh. You know, you spoke uh, very well about. I, I have a, I have a, I have a question to the last part. Talk about our parents. Mm. We shall come back to that. But let's go back to the hadith where he said, in the sabr in the ula, patience is at the beginning of a calamity. Correct. Now, do you mean that at that particular time, let's say someone, for instance, hits my car? Mm. And I go out and I start shouting, why will you hit my car, blah, blah, the likes of it. And I say, okay, I'll be patient. Let me just go back to my car. Is, does that, is that considered as being patient or no? If I go out of the car, I look at the spot, and I try to be patient as much as I can because the prophet said I should do that. What, what do you mean by well, that? Well, yeah, there are some variables we are supposed to really understand. Of course, somebody coming to hit your car, of course, you will feel the pains. Mm. And certainly you will come out. And certainly you'll make statement, but don't show your father, your mother, may God cause you may no no no. No. Hey, gentlemen, why? Why? You understand? Okay. I I, I think you must repair my car. Mm. Because I'm not because it it is it is a deliberate act and uh, because I think uh, I want to teach such persons some lessons to serve as deterrent so that they don't do it. The next time, but as you come and as you came out, or as you come out, and you also came out. Sorry, sir. I am indeed very, very sorry. I am wrong, and I know I am. Please, sir. There. Let's see. Who is your father? Tell me who is your father in this country. Tell me. Tell me. I'm going. So, so, so. If he behaves in a way which attracts you to be patient then patiently persevere and from there you can solve the situation. Mm, amazing. Mm. So, uh, you know, coming back to my next question, uh, but you, talk, you spoke about respecting parents and of course, um, you know, this has been something that, you know, most every day you hear about, you have mm. been emphasized and we know how Allah Azawajalla has talked about honoring the parents and you have no choice but to honor them, to respect them, uh, to, you know, lower your wings for them, of, in, for humility, to speak with them with the right words. How, what if in a situation whereby kids are being either emotionally or physically abusing their own children? Now, what should the child do? Now, the child understands, I see you have to respect your father, but this is affecting him as a person or her as a person, that the father did not understand that, okay, this is actually hurting them emotionally 
and the likes of it. How do they go about being patient with this situation? Well, it's very unfortunate if a father wouldn't know that he is emotionally really uh, uh, injuring his own son. This is quite unfortunate. And uh, even with that, even with that, I think the children, one, should really have the spiritual wisdom to be able to draw the attention of the parents mm. uh, in a good way. Maybe they have gone to the masjid together or they're in uh, during uh, breakfast or dinner or supper and he saw the situation palatable for them to talk. Oh, Daddy, please, can I? Yes, sorry, please, but, but please, Daddy, please don't be offended. Please, and choose the right words. Daddy, I, I, I think uh, certain actions that you are doing, uh, I, I think so, they are hurting, and they are not this, this. If, he's in the, if he is spiritually alert, then you will realize and be thankful to his own child. But when it becomes very difficult, take the scenario of Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام, and his father. Father, why do you worship that? Why do you worship, uh, why, why do you worship images that don't hear, don't see, and can be of benefit to you? Daddy, knowledge from Allah has come to me, which you have not received any of such. Please, Daddy, come with me so that I guide you to the right path. Daddy, please, don't, don't worship the Satan, but for Satan is an avowed um, transgressor in going contrary to Allah's um, uh, uh, dictates. Daddy, I am afraid that punishment, be, I fear of the punishment that may come to you from Allah so in order that you may not become a friend of the Satan. Mm. You see, these are there's nothing abusive. Good words. Good words, kind. And each daddy, father, and soul, and so forth. And the father fled up. You! If Abraham, so you are shying, of, shying away from my, my, my gods and goddesses. If you stop not, I will throw you with stones and I will ask you to leave me, then say, peace be unto you. I will seek for you God's forgiveness. But daddy, I think it has come to a point that I have to leave and so on and so on. So you can see, this is how, yes, yes. But not, hey, daddy, you're stupid. Oh, you don't be silly. You know, the Western type of thinking of relationship in the home between the parents under the so-called democracy and that everybody has a right to do whatever he wants. Somebody can become an animal, somebody can become a dog, he can marry a donkey and he can he can kiss a pig and so on and 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 and, and so on. So you wonder that this is that this is development, this is socialization and so on and so forth. When a human being debases himself to the level of becoming a pig or a dog, then it's unfortunate. MashaAllah, SubhanAllah. And Sheikh, mm. just before we end this show, I want to ask another question. You, you talk about, you know, we speak to our parents, if they are spiritually alerted, they will listen to us. But if in a situation whereby the parent is not spiritually alerted, Correct. what should the child do? Should he meet other people to talk to? What step will the child do so that he will not transgress the limit of Allah Jalla Ala Malik? One. Let us still follow Abraham. Mm. There is for you in Prophet Abraham uh, an exemplar that you can copy. What do we do? He said, Salamu alaykum, Daddy, may the peace, peace be unto you. Then you say, Okay, sorry, Daddy. I'm very, very sorry for what I've said. Even though there, Allah said, we should copy Abraham except the saying that he is looking, going to look for forgiveness 
of his father because he was a, he, because he, he is a mushrik. Mm -hmm. That is a part. But you, what you do after apologizing, despite the fact that he is wrong, the father is wrong, but still God said you apologize. Two, then you go back and continue to pray for him. Because Allah comes in between man and his own heart. Allah changes the heart of man. So let him go and continue to pray for Allah to change his mind from the darkness of misbehavior to the light of righteousness for him to, to follow. So from that, he continues to pray. Inshallah, he will see changes. But in case he did not, does he have... Um, Parents, maybe grandfather, grandmother to the child, uncles, friends, good neighbors and so on. He will have different uh, options to go and talk to so that they talk to him. I assure you, there will be positive change from the father. Inshallah, tabarakallah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank and, you. And um, may Allah bless you. We hope to have you again, inshallah. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right, viewers, alhamdulillah, we've come to the end of this episode. You've known what you really need to know. We hope that you've enjoyed the episode. Make sure you subscribe and also watch the show on Sunnah TV. We ask that to bless you all. We'll leave you all in the care of Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.